So now that the beta is over and we've finished running around on the playground that was Seas of Shanghai, DICE are committing to changing a few things and that's of course what a beta is for. And they've released a changelog of all of the things they want to improve on in the final release of Battlefield 4. Just to give you guys a brief overview before I get going, this changelog applies to all platforms. So that's PC, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and the next generation consoles, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. So without further ado, let's go straight into it. And the first topic I'm going to pick are some of the infantry changes that they've decided to make. Because I think they make probably the biggest change overall on gameplay. So let's go through a couple of those. The first one, and I think the most important out of most of the changes in this game anyway, is that the revive time is being changed from 7 seconds to 10 seconds. So you're actually going to be able to revive more than about two people on the floor. Now we know that the defibs have been nerfed in Battlefield 4 so that there is a recharge time for them anyway, but you make the decision as to how much you want to revive somebody in terms of health, so having that extra 3 seconds gives you the opportunity to perhaps charge up your paddles to give someone a full re-health charge. And the second one that I think is the most important is the ammo pack will now reload two magazines of bullets instantly, and if you continue to stand where the ammo pack actually was, it will regen up to four ammo clips. The key point being here that you actually have to stand by the ammo pack in order to see a full benefit from it. So it's kind of a decision that you're going to have to make. Do you just want the two magazines and potentially leave yourself in the open? Or do you want to take all four and take that risk? Sticking on the end of that, we actually have the ammo packs and the health packs have had their throw distance increase, which makes it easier for them to actually lock onto your friendly teammates. Because in the beta I found you can throw them and they will just fall on the floor right next to your teammate, rather than actually sticking to them, so that's now been fixed as well. Something else that I think should be mentioned, quite a lot of the community, including myself, thought DICE had actually increased the amount of damage that the weapons did and buffed the weapon damage model. That's completely untrue. It was just simply the animation of when you get shot or when you're killed didn't match up with when the bullets actually hit you. So it made it look like you were just getting one hit killed all the time. So that's now been spaced out again. So when a bullet actually hits you, the actual animation hits you as well. So it makes it look like you're being killed realistically now. Moving on to a couple of platform specific fixes now, for the PC at least, uh, pretty much the whole community at some point had some sort of problem with the frame rate and the lag in the game. DICE has taken all of the metadata from each individual PC because it can actually tell what hardware you're using, taken that into consideration and will do their best to optimise pretty much any configuration that you have. Of course some will perform better than others and at the moment I think with AMD they're going to perform perhaps slightly better than Nvidia but probably they'll release beta drivers and then it will make it no difference anyway, at least until Mantle comes out for AMD cards. So if you were having lag issues or frame rate drops and things like that, chances are in the main game that's going to be completely fixed. For consoles, I know it was a huge annoyance that all of the controls were out of place for what was a Battlefield 3 user, so if you were used to the Battlefield 3 layout of the control, then it was completely different for Battlefield 4 and you had to relearn the controls. Well, good news for you, DICE are going to be introducing a legacy option in the final game that is going to represent Battlefield 3 as much as it can, but don't forget, there are a few new features in Battlefield 4 that require extra buttons like canted iron sights, etc. So they aren't going to be exactly the same, however, most of the main controls are going to be under the same buttons that you're used to, so it'll probably make it easier to play for you. A couple of weapon related fixes now. The AK-12, you may or may not know, actually had a higher rate of fire in burst fire mode than it did in fully automatic mode. In burst fire you could actually get it to fire at a thousand rounds per minute, whereas in automatic fire it was about 750, so that's now been fixed and the reason why is because it has such low recoil that it actually made it so powerful while it was in burst fire mode that you could pretty much take anybody out, so I think that was probably a good fix by DICE. Something that I think will make a lot of people rejoice, RPGs and s'mores can no longer lock on to laser designated targets. It was just completely unrealistic in my eyes and DICE felt that that was exactly the same in their eyes after having seen the beta, so that's been completely removed. Further adding on to the lock-on system, they're now actually going to reduce the damage for any missile that is locked on from 100% to 90% on the attack helicopters, so they actually stand a chance of surviving a lock-on now, and it actually gives them a chance to use the extinguisher feature, so it just seems like it is more balanced and it does give the person who's under heavy fire a chance to escape if they're a good pilot. A couple of miscellaneous changes to round off this part of the video at least. 
on Xbox 360 and PS3 and I'm guessing next generation consoles, aim assist has been tweaked. DICE felt that at close range the aim assist was too powerful and you don't really need it at close range anyway, so they've actually nerfed that down a bit so you have to do more work with the controller. And at medium to long range they've made it much easier to track targets because in the beta they found that it wasn't as good as it could have been and people were probably missing shots quite a lot. All of the Tau missiles have now had their speed buff from 50 meters per second to 75 meters per second so it makes it easier for you to catch up with your target with that missile so you don't just sort of sit there hanging around for like an extra three seconds trying to hit the attack helicopter. You'll find that it's now much quicker to actually hit that if you can aim well. And finally the elevator button can no longer be used as a catapult. They actually removed that. I thought it was really cool. There were a couple of videos out there on YouTube of people just like flinging themselves into the air with that thing but rest assured that has been fixed for the final release. And that's pretty much it. Those are most of the main changes that are actually going to affect gameplay I feel. The other ones are just very small tweaks or they're sort of more aesthetic than anything else. But at least it's good that they've taken on board all of the things that we pretty much moaned about in the beta and have tweaked them or removed them or added things or taken things away to make the final game that much better. Just a couple more things before I end this video, I am now under 1,000 subs away from 20,000 subscribers. Now that's a massive achievement and it's only taken me about 11 months to get there. So for myself, I'm actually really proud of my channel, but I'm really thankful for everyone who subscribed. So if you want to help me get to 20k before Battlefield 4 comes out, then make sure you hit like on this video because it really does actually help me out. And it would be like the best present ever if I could do it before Christmas at least. So if you guys could help me out, that would be much appreciated. And the last thing I wanted to mention, in the description below there's a link to an imager page of 20 screenshots from Battlefield 4 in 1440p on ultra settings. Now I think the game looks pretty good in medium settings which is what I was playing on most of the time because I didn't want the ultra lag with my mouse, but the game looks absolutely fantastic in ultra settings on PC and the screenshots are higher than 1080p as well so if you're into that kind of thing then there's a link in the description for you. And that's just about me done guys, so thanks for watching the video, if you did enjoy it don't forget to drop a like and comments are always appreciated, but until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.